Hey class, today we're going to be doing section 2.9 for AP Stats, which is talking about re-expressing our data. So when we're doing linear regression and we're trying to um, find uh, a regression, a linear regression equation to use to predict values, uh, and we're using data to do that, sometimes our data isn't really linear. And so just running a basic linear regression and getting an equation isn't going to be good enough. We have conditions that need to be checked, which we'll talk about. Uh, we've talked about that in previous lessons or videos as well. Um, and then I'll show you how to re-express your data and what that does uh, to allow us to finish the problem. All right, so uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get your graphing calculators and maybe pause the video for a second and put your values from your table into your lists in your calculators. So I've already done that by going, uh, if I go back here, stat and then edit and I put the lists in there in L1 and L2. Uh, here we have data relating water velocity in centimeters per second in a river given the distance in meters from a boat ramp along the shore. So distance in meters is gonna be our explanatory X variable, velocity is our response Y variable. Um, before I find my least squares regression line and correlation coefficient, I definitely want to uh, define my variables so that I don't have to um, use them in my equation. That way I can just use variables later. So X is going to be distance in meters from boat ramp. And then Y hat. So remember when we write our least squares regression line, uh, it's not Y equals, it's a Y hat. And this is predicted. The hat means you're predicting. It's like a wizard hat. You're predicting things. Uh, predicted velocity of water in centimeters per second. Okay, so I got some nice context going there. So to determine the regression line, what we're gonna do is be in our calculators, go to stat, over to calculate, and I usually go down to the eighth one on my calculator, which is lin reg or linear regression, A plus BX. Uh, the fourth one also works, it's just the A plus BX is how my book writes it. So here we go, I'm gonna change this to make sure I have L1, and I'm doing second and then two for L2. So if you have to change the list, you just do second and then your numbers. And then I'm gonna store my regression equation in Y1. So I'm gonna go vars over to Y vars function and Y1. And then I'm going to calculate. So here I have the information I need for my line and my correlation coefficient. So my line Y hat equals 22.808. Uh, plus 0.732x. And again, I've defined my variables x and y hat so I can use them in an equation. Uh, my correlation coefficient r is 0 0.928. We want to use at least three decimals. Um, and it seems really strong. This is a strong value. So you might think, okay, well, I can use this. Unfortunately, we've gone over conditions before and it's not just all about how strong your r is. Uh, we have to check the scatter plot. We have to check the residual plot and make sure all of our conditions are met. If you're not sure what those conditions are, you can go watch one of my previous videos on that. All right, so now to get our scatter plot, I'm going to go second y equals. I'm going to make sure that my, my first plot I like to use for like box plots and histograms, so that's off. Um, I'm going to go down to plot three and turn it off as well because I don't want to do residual plot yet. I'm also, while I'm here, I'm going to change this to L1 for my X list, All right? And then I'm gonna go to plot two, turn it on. I want a scatter plot here and then L1, you see I was using lots of lists last time and L2. Okay, so then I'm gonna go zoom and nine, which is zoom stat to get my scatter plot. And then I'm gonna draw this on my graph uh, or on my paper we wanna make sure to label our axes. So I have velocity in centimeters per second, distance in meters, uh, and then I usually draw my line first. And then I just kinda of eyeball where the points go in relation to the line. You don't have to scale your axes for these. You can if you want, but it does take a little bit longer to do the problem if you do. And then this one and something like this. Okay, so that's what my scatter plot looks like. Um, and you might think, okay, well, that looks reasonably linear. There's no like fanning out of any of the points. They're all kind of constantly spread around that line. Uh, but we do need to check the residual plot. So let's go back to second y equals. I'm going to go turn my plot to off. 
And then I can either do second y equals, or I can just go up here and go over to plot three, just kind of a shortcut. I'm going to turn this on. Oops, it didn't save my x, my L1. Okay, I'm going to put L1 in here. And then if you're not sure, if yours doesn't say residuals, what you do is you go to second stat into the list and then go down here to residual, press enter, and you'll get your residuals in there. And as long as you've already run or calculated your linear regression, the calculator already stores those residuals in there for you. All right, so now I'm going to do uh, zoom stat for my residual plot. So this is my residual plot. When we write that on our papers, we always want to label our axes. So I have distance because I plotted it based on my X values. You can actually, I've seen the book plot it based on Y values as well. So you could do it either way. I always go X. And then residuals on our vertical axis. Uh, and then kind of figure out what this looks like. I'm going to eyeball it again. And then if you notice, this is not what we wanted to see because if I kind of, let me see, I'm going to just grab a highlighter here just so you can see what I'm doing. This looks like that. <laughs> I mean, there's one point out of place, but that is definitely a curved pattern. Uh, that is not a random pattern and that is not what we want. I can make this a little sad face because that's not what we want this to look like. <laughs> All right. So the least squares regression line based on our conditions is not an appropriate model to predict the velocity of the water in a river given the distance from a boat ramp because the residual, oops, residual plot uh, does not appear random. You can say the residual plot has a curved pattern. You can say this a few different ways. I like saying that it has a curved pattern because instead of just saying it's not random, you're kind of explaining a little bit more about why. So uh, when a relation between two variables is nonlinear, uh, we can't use the least squares regression line to predict the value of our response variable. So we need to re-express the data. So it doesn't mean that we're done. It doesn't mean we can't do this. It just means we need to change it up to try to straighten this out. So data can be re-expressed to make curved data more linear, thus making our least squares regression line equation an appropriate model to make a prediction. So let's look at what that looks like. So example, this example here, we're using the same information, so we're going to use the same numbers in our calculator, compute the cubed root of the distance values. So in AP stats, they're most likely, I've, I don't think I've ever seen them not uh, do this, but they're most likely going likely to tell you how to re-express the data. So you don't have to figure it out. You just have to know how to do what they're asking you to do. So I'm going to compute the cubed root of the distance values. So instead of the distance being my x values, I'm going to have the cubed root of the distance values in meters. Uh, and here, the cubed root of distance in meters. So the, to do that, what we want to do in our calculators is go stat, calculate. Nope, sorry. Stat, edit, go into your lists. I'm going to go over to L3. I'm going to go up until the uh, L3 itself is highlighted and press enter. Notice now my cursor is down here where it says L3 and I'm going to do the cubed root of L1. If I hit math, I can actually go down and use a cubed root here, or you can use a one-third exponent if that's easier for you. But I'm going to do the cubed root of the distance values. So be careful. <clears throat> we don't always re-express using the x values. <clears throat> Sorry. Sometimes we re-express using the y values. Sometimes we re-express both of them. So read carefully. This is saying the cube root of the distance, whoops, cube root of the distance values uh, which is our x values. So I want L3 to be the cubed root of L1. So second and one will give me L1 and I'm going to press enter and it's going to do the math for me. So you don't have to physically take the cubed root of each one. You just give it a command to do it for you. So again, I went up to L3. I had, I hit enter and then uh, here, let me, let me clear this out so you can see it again. So up to L3, I hit enter. And then I went to math down to the cubed root and second and one, cubed root of L1. Now, when I want to see if this worked, 
Uh, and if this is an appropriate model, I'm going to go into my stat plots. I'm going to look at my scatter plot again. Oh, nope, I'm not. I need to rerun my regression. Otherwise, the, the, um, the residuals won't be calculated. So I'm going to go to calculate first. Sometimes it's forget. It's easy to forget what to do first. Okay, so go down to linear regression, except this time my X list is not L1, it's L3. That's my re-expressed X list. I'm gonna store my regression equation in Y1. I know I'm going a little fast, so hopefully you're keeping up with me. All right, so we have this. My R is still pretty strong. Um, I'm gonna write this down because when I look at my graphs, I'm gonna lose this. So all the way down at my bottom, because I wanna do a, a, pr a prediction here. I'm going to write y hat equals, uh, actually, I'm going to save that for a second. I'm just going to write a equals 17.541 and b equals 5.507. Okay, so I can use those later to write my equation. Now I'm going to go to second, y equals to stat plots. I'm going to turn my plot three off for now. I'm going to go up to plot two. I want to look at my scatter plot first. So I'm going to turn that on. And then remember, X list, we want re-expressed Xs. So second and three will give me that L3 for my re-expressed X list. And then I'm going to do zoom and nine for zoom stat. And here is my uh, scatter plot. If we look back at the last page at our scatter plot, um, this looks really close to the same thing. Um, but not quite. So look at those points. They are a little different. So make sure it's not the exact same that you didn't do something wrong here. Uh, all right. So I'm going to draw my line and it still looks reasonably linear. So, so far, so good. It looks pretty randomized ish and pretty constantly spread out from our line, constant spread of the residuals. Now let's look at our residual plots. This is where we really get to see what's going on and if there's any patterns involved, so I'm gonna go down and turn off my plot two, and then I'm gonna to go to plot three. I'm gonna turn it on. And then remember, it already calculated my residuals for me when I ran my linear regression, but I do need to change this to L3 for my X list. Okay, and then I'm gonna do zoom stat, and there's my new residuals I have, and I'm gonna just kind of eyeball this again, something, like this. And now that is much less curved. There's a lot kind of going on. Actually, this is a little bit shifted over. I need to be a little bit more careful. Okay, uh, so this is much more random than it was before. So I'm happy with this. So we've checked our scatter plot, our residual plot. The residual plot appears to be random. There's no definite like curved pattern or anything. The scatter plot appears reasonably linear um, and there's no fanning out of our points. So that's pretty constant spread of our residuals. So the least squares regression line, and this is how we're gonna write this because it asked me to determine if the resulting re-expressed data generates an appropriate least squares regression line. We have to be careful when we say this. The least squares regression line of the re-expressed data. You can't just say of the data. It is now re-expressed data is an appropriate model to predict the velocity of the water in the river uh, given the cubed root of, oops, cubed root of the distance from a boat ramp. So we have to talk about what we're doing in there uh, because the scatter plot of the re-expressed data, again, don't say the scatter plot, say the re-expressed scatter plot or re-expressed data is reasonably linear and the corresponding residual plot, or you can say the residual plot of the re-expressed data uh, appears random. All right, so we're good to go. So that's what re-expressed data, re-expressing your data does for us. Now it says, if it's inappropriate, use this model to predict the water velocity at 4.2 meters from the boat ramp. So uh, I wanna figure out what is y hat when X is 4.2. Now this can get a little tricky, so pay attention. <laughs> uh, so first thing, I already have my X and my Y hat um, 
defined in the beginning of our problem. And since this is just a continuation of the same problem, I don't need to redefine my variables. I already did it. Uh, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to write my equation. So y hat equals a 17.541 plus 5.507. And now you can't just put x because it's not x. We have the cubed root of x. So, uh, so in your equation, you have to build in what happened to those x values. So now y hat, if x is 4.2, I need to solve the equation 17.541 plus 5.507 times the cubed root of 4.2. So plug that in your calculator, you should get 26.426 centimeters per second. Right? And that's it for today's lesson.